2.6 talks about transformation of functions. We graph those by picking points. Now, if you're ever stuck on a problem, you could always pick points, but we want to see if we could identify what is happening to a graph without picking points if possible. Explain how the graph of g is obtained from the graph of f. This is the graph of f. In this case, f happened to be an absolute the g of x will be the absolute value of x plus 3. So the way I remember that whatever is affecting x, we do the opposite of. And whatever is affecting y, you do exactly what it says. And you would know that a value is affecting y if you could move it from one side of the equation to the other side. Like this negative 3. I could add 3 to both sides. That's affecting y. But whatever is affecting x, you cannot move to the other side by simple arithmetic, addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. So since, since this is affecting x, this is going to shift the graph, shift 3 units to the right, to the left, 3 units left. That's all you need to say. If I look at this graph, the fact that the negative 3 is outside of the absolute value, and I could move it to the other side by simple arithmetic, here I would say this would shift the graph 3 units, and that would be down. For this graph, the negative will reflect the graph. with multiplying the y by a negative x-axis. So, reflections work like intercepts. If you want to find the x-intercept, you set y equal to 0. If you want to set the, if you want to find that y-intercept, you set x equal to 0. Multiplying the y by a negative, reflect the graph with respect to the x-axis. Then, we shift Two units up. Here we shift three units left. We multiply y values by a two. Then we shift the graph one unit up. And that's pretty much all you have to say. If you really like to say, you know, instead of shifting three in the stand, you want to say subtract or add a negative three to the y values, you could do that too. That's the same thing. So here we have f of x equal radical x. Multiplying the x by a negative, you could say reflect with respect to the y axis. You could also say multiply x values by a negative. But reflection is more what we're after. Here, reflect with respect to the x-axis. Then you shift three units up. Here, we reflect with respect to the y then x, or x then y, and then we shift one unit up. Here, shift one unit left, multiply y values, that's like stretching, multiply y values by 3, then you shift 
two units down. Now we're going to put that to the test. Sketch a graph. Well, I know what x squared looks like. Hopefully we do. This is going to shift the graph two units to the right. A sketch means you just have to keep track of the vertex. <coughs> this will shift the graph three units to the left. If you like to pick points, you're welcome to do that like we did on section 2.2 here. If you're not sure what the three does, all what you have to do is pick the three points that we talked about, and that gives away the graph. You don't have to do that, but you could. Two, a point above it and a point below it, that should do the trick. What this does, shift the graph two units to the right. Stretch the graph by a factor of three, or multiply the y values by three, then shift the graph one unit up. But if you want to graph it, throw a two in there, that would be zero, that would be one. Throw a three in there, that would be one. Three plus one is four. And a negative 1 squared is 1, that would be a 4. So 2, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. The worst case scenario, you pick the 3 points like we did, and there it is. Here, we're going to shift the graph 2 units to the left, reflect it down, and then shift it up 2 units. The 2 will make the graph twice as wide. You want to get it perfect. No big deal. Where does that equal 0? A point above it and a point below it. A negative 2 in there will make that a 2. A negative 1 in there will make that a 1. That's a 0. And a negative 3 in there will make that negative 1 squared, which is 1. Negative 2 plus 2 is a 0. So if you want to get a more accurate graph, 1, 2, 1, 3. It's really negative 1, 0, and negative 3, 0, there. You could pick points anytime you like, and it only takes 3 points. Cube. Well, this is going to shift the cubic graph 1 unit to the left. So it's going to look like a parabola, and minus that. This is going to reflect x cubed, so it's going to look like this. And the 2 is going to shift that 2 units up. This is going to shift the cube 3 units to the right, 2 units up. It's going to compress by a factor of 2. There you go. And if you're not sure, pick the 3 points. This is going to reflect the graph with respect to the y-axis. So instead of the graph looking like this, it's going to look more like this. That turns out to be identical to this. And then I'm going to shift it one unit. Oops, that looks horrible. Like this. Oops. I'll get it right. Third time would be x wrong. No, I didn't. Fourth time would be x wrong. There we go. So this is going to shift it one unit down, and there it is. We need to master these graphs. Absolute value shifted two units to the right. Again, you don't have to pick any points. Three units to the left, one unit down. This is going to compress it by a factor of three. If it says sketch a graph, a rough graph will do. You're not sure. Pick the three points or that equals zero. A point above, a point below. That will do the trick. This is going to shift the graph four units to the right. Reflect it down and shift it up three units. So the graph looks something like that. Shift an absolute value one unit to the left, one unit up. It's going to compress it by a factor of two. But if it says sketch, that's good enough. Not sure, pick the three points. A graph of a function is given. I'm sorry, I should have said an equation. An equation of a function is given. Right? An equation for the final transformation, transform, transformed graph, if the following transformations are applied. I have 
f of x equal x squared. If I want to shift this three units down, wouldn't that become f of x equal x squared minus three? Here, I have a radical. I want to shift it three units to the left. Wouldn't that be f of x or g of x if you want to call it? Three units to the left. Remember, whatever is affecting x, you do the opposite of. I have x cubed. Reflect it with respect to the x-axis. Multiply the y by a negative. Shift it two units to the left. And finally, shift it one unit down. You don't have to show all of these steps. Here, a simple answer will do. Now comes the actual practice. I'm given the graph of f that consists of the point negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 1, 0, and 3, 2. You could do this two ways, and that's why I left space here. You could simply say, you know what, I not shift that. This is going to shift that graph two units to the left. Two units to the left, two units to the left, there's a line connecting those. Two units to the left, there's a line connecting those. And two units to the left, done. You could just do that and you're done. Or you could say, I'm going to add negative two to x values. Take each of those points and add a negative two. Add a negative 2 to that, it becomes negative 1, negative 2, negative, negative 4, negative 1. Add a negative 2 to that, that would be negative 3, 1. Connect those. Add a negative 2 to that, that becomes negative 1, 0. Connect those. And add a negative 2 to that, that becomes 1, 2. Connect those. So you can do this any way you like. If you're comfortable with these graphs, just go ahead and sketch the graph like I did in the first part. If you're not sure, do the shifting like I did. Show the work if you want. It doesn't really matter. By saying sketch, you don't have to show much. What this does, this is going to reflect the graph with respect multiplying the x by a negative. This is going to reflect with respect to the y-axis. What does that mean? That means this point is 2 units to the right. It's going to become 3 units to the left. This point is 1 unit to the left it's going to become one unit to the right. This is one unit to the right. And this point is three units to the right. It's going to become three units to the left. And that's how the graph looks like. Now, if you like, you could say divide x values by a negative one. Again, you go to these points, go to the x, Multiplying by a negative 1 and divided by negative 1 is the same thing. If I take this point and I multiply this by a negative, that becomes 2, negative 1. Multiply this by a negative, that becomes 1, 1, connecting with a straight edge. Multiplied by a negative becomes negative 1, 0. And multiplied by a negative becomes negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 1, 2. Up to you. I get to this graph, this is going to multiply x values by a half. Remember, whatever is affecting x, you do the opposite of. Or it's going to shrink these graph, these points, by a factor of a half or two. This factor of a two, and this by a factor of a two, 1.5. Done deal. Or you could pick the points and literally multiply each point by a half, multiply this to x value by a half, x value by a half, and do it accordingly. This is going to shift this graph two units down. It's very easy to do once you get the hang of this. Here, we're going to multiply 
the y values by a negative or affect the graph with respect to the x-axis. So since this point is one unit below, it's going to become one unit above. This is one unit above becomes one unit below. A point, if it's on the line of reflection, it's its own reflection. And instead of two units up, it's going to go two units down. And there's the graph of the reflection. If you flip the page about the x-axis, the red and the blue should match. And here, you would multiply the y values by a half. So instead of this being negative 1, it's going to be a half. The x's are in touch. This is half. That multiplying 0 by any number remains the same. And there it is. So that's going to literally cut the range in half. even odd if f of negative x if you throw replace x by a negative and disappears that's an even function an even function is like a parabola the right half of the graph is identical to the left half that is the graph symmetric with respect to the x-axis an odd function is symmetric with respect to the origin, meaning you reflect the graph with respect to the x-axis, then the y, or the y, then the x. So if I want to determine whether a function is even or odd, what I do, I replace x by a negative. That's negative x cubed plus a negative x plus 1. It's a two-step process. Simplify. Is this what you started with? If that's not the case, this function is not an even function. Factor a minus out of it. So this was checked to see if this matches. That's x cubed plus x minus 1. Is this what I started with? If it is, that's odd. It's not in this case because of the negative 1. So we say this is neither. So it's always a two-step process. doesn't take that long extremely useful this function I replace x by a negative and I clean it up that's the first step if this is what I started with then I'm done that's an even function here again I replace x by a negative you can't have a function that's both even and odd. That's not possible. That wouldn't be a function. Clean it up. Since this is not what I started with, my next step and last step, I factor a negative out of it. Since this is what I started with, that's an odd function. And that's all you have to do. Now, the last thing I want to go over is the graph of absolute value. I know you know how to graph absolute value, but I'm going to show you a trick on how to graph any absolute value. To graph an absolute value, you ignore the absolute value. You say, let's look at y equal x. y equal x is a graph that looks like this. You come in and you say, all right, you know what? By putting an absolute value on it. Now I'm saying y is always positive. Well, if y is positive, it's fine. Wherever y is not positive, reflect that with respect to the x-axis. And there's your absolute value. So when you want to graph the next, I'm going to graph f of x equal x squared minus 4. That's a parabola shifted down four units. So the parabola looks something like this. When you slap an absolute value on it, wherever it's positive, it's fine, because now f of x is always positive. Wherever it's negative, you reflect it with respect to the x-axis. So the graph now looks something like this. The graph is always above the x-axis. Same deal here. We glance at this graph and we say, all right, well, let's see. What if I look at x cubed plus 2? 
that is a cubic shift tip up two units. Then, by putting an absolute value on it, now you're saying f of x is always positive. Well, it's positive here that you leave alone, but this part right here will reflect up, and that's how the graph looks like. And that's how you sketch a graph of any absolute.